Some important events happen just once a year. New Year's Eve, the first day of school, and of course, the annual corn roast and attic auction at Endless Park Elementary. Mmm, this is really good. Yum, taste this. Get your fresh roasted corn. Oh, Anna. Gracias. <laughs> this must be what they're going to sell at the auction. Ooh. George was excited. He had one whole dollar to spend on whatever he wanted. Okay, so the bidding will start at $100. <laughs> George? <laughs> Why isn't Mr. Glass bidding? Here, let me try. Uh, did you notice these mittens have Elephants? <laughs> and they're red. And <laughs> there are two of them. <laughs> right, one for each hand or foot. <laughs> <clears throat> Mr. Glass isn't there. Uh-oh, time was running out. If George didn't get these mittens sold, a hundred pigs were going to be very clean. Uh-oh. I'll look for Mr. Glass. You keep trying to sell the mittens. Look, they're not just mittens, they're earmuffs. You know, these are hand-knit mittens, knitted by hands, by these hands, in fact. Um, perhaps you can tell us something about your technique. Yes, I use yarn. And knitting needles. <gasps> Mr. Glass! Absolutely! I love those mittens. They're unique. Great. Because George doesn't have $100, so he put them up for auction again so you could buy them and the library could get $101. Only now there's only one minute of bidding time left. One minute? How are we going to get to the auction in one minute? Um? Right. There are two of them. And the wool is from a very nice sheep named, uh, Carmen. <laughs> Let's face it, no one's gonna buy those mittens. <laughs> Stop <gasps> those mittens! I'll pay a hundred and one dollars. Sold! <laughs> this was great. The library had a hundred and one dollars. <laughs> and George didn't have to wash a hundred pigs. <laughs> Still, he would miss his mittens. Don't worry, George. I'll knit you another pair of mittens with giraffes. Ooh. <laughs> It had been raining in the country, 
a lot. Rainy days were great for vegetables and pigs. But not for tractors. <sighs> I'm going to need a tow truck. <sighs> I wish we had something fun to do, huh, George? Uh-huh. Whoa! 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 My toss is way off since I sprained my thumb. Ah! <laughs> thumb wrestling injury. <sighs> I really miss it. Sorry about your paper. It's okay. <gasps> hey, that's something fun to do. We could get the paper down. <laughs> First, we have to build an elevator and... Ah. Oh! Whoa! Crazy, huh? An artist next town over made a giant sculpture of his dog. Hey! That would be fun! Let's do that! Let's make a ginormous sculpture! Ooh! Ha 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 ha! I wish I could make a ginormous sculpture, but I've got this bum thumb. Hmm. Oh, you can supervise. <laughs> cool. So, what should we make? <laughs> Suddenly, George saw the perfect thing. Sally perfected her mud recipe. Their ginormous sculpture really started shaping up. Looking good! <laughs> now, the tractor is in really deep. I've never seen this much mud in my life. Yeah, I, 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 I'm telling you, it was buried. where all that mud went. Cool. I like it. Ah, ah. Yeah, it looks great. Oops, we look awful. I'll get a hose so you can wash up. <laughs> <laughs> there, all better. I just want to spend some time with my thumb. <laughs> so that's where all that mud went. That's a good looking thumb. Yep. She's a beauty. Your thumb is going to be famous, Bill. People are going to come from all over the world just to see it. <laughs> well, <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> what on earth? Excuse me? We're looking for the giant sculpture of the... Thumb? No, dog. We don't have a dog, but we have this. That's some thumb. Yep, I'm pretty proud of it. And it's an original work of mud. We've been driving around all afternoon looking for that giant dog. But there's no better statue than the one that you can find. We should have packed a lunch. I'm hungry. Me too. Yes, I'm We've got to get some food somewhere. Mm. Oh, thank you. Peanut butter. Mm. This day went from being boring to way better. <laughs> yeah, it's a great thought. That is so cool! Hey, watch this! Deep from the heart of darkness comes something truly terrifying! Hoagie the giant hamster! <laughs> ah. Oh no! My 
two-sided marker. Uh, I can't see it. I know. Let's get Hoagie to find it. Huh? Oh, yeah. Okay, Hoagie. Find the marker, boy. Hey, I've been looking for that. George couldn't believe all the stuff under Aunt Margaret's couch. <laughs> Stairs? <laughs> What's the matter, George? <laughs> hey, that looks like the alley outside. <laughs> outside! Oh no! Hoagie's escaped and he's got Professor Wiseman's camera! Bicycle, 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 bicycle! Ah. Phew! Oh, how am I gonna find the little bitty hamster out there? <laughs> Good thinking. We can look at the computer and figure out where Hoagie is. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah! Looks like he's near the dinosaur bush. See? It's right here on the map. Okay, we have to split up. Someone has to watch the computer so we know where Hoagie goes. We can use my walkie-talkies to communicate. <gasps> Hoagie can fly! George had Hoagie, but Hoagie didn't have the camera. So who did? I lost the world's most incredible hamster. He can ride a bike and fly. George could chase the camera later. First, he wanted to get Hoagie home and he could get there without a map. George, Hoagie landed in the park. Now he's walking, and he's got a really big tongue. George, do you copy? George! Hoagie! I missed you, buddy. Uh, oh, wait, if you're here, who's there? Hey, that's our door. Uh, coming, camera. <laughs> Charky? How'd you get this? <laughs> Hello, Steve. Oh, hey, Professor. I still have your camera for you. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, my. Well, I've got to run. Wait, Professor, you have to see this. My hamster can fly. Come on, Hoagie, show the Professor. Fly, buddy, fly. <laughs> uh, we know you can fly. I don't get it. It's not every day that a monkey sees a plane writing words in the sky. It says, come one, come all to a totally unique wind symphony. Be there or be square. Huh? I have no idea what that means. Wind symphony, one night only. Be there or be square. But I guess we should be there. I certainly don't want to be square. <laughs> Behold, a symphony in the making. And there's the maestro in charge. Mr. Zubel? Yep. Last week, he made me this beautiful pocket wind chime. Ooh. Oh, when I heard this delicate sound, I thought, let's make it 20 times bigger, 40 times. <laughs> so you want Mr. Zubel to create a giant wind chime? 
Exactly. Something that makes a lot of noise when the wind blows. How's it coming, Zubel? Uh, I'm sorry, but I'm an artist, not a musician. I don't know if I can make this work. <laughs> ah, music to my ears. <laughs> I have faith in you, Zubel. You'll think of something. You have until Saturday. That's tomorrow. <sighs> hmm. Say, George, do you want to help me make a wind symphony? <laughs> I can state categorically that Wynn will be arriving uh, soon, no later than Wednesday. Wednesday? Oh, that's no good. I need wind now. Oh, boy. This is a disaster. Look! All those people are expecting a world-class symphonic event in 23 minutes. Good luck, maestros. Yeah, you said it, George. Yeesh. If the wind symphony was going to work, George had better go find some wind. <laughs> George grabbed anything that looked like he could make wind. Fans, the vacuum cleaner, the bellows from the fireplace, a piece of paper. Oh, and this looked good, too. This is so exciting. <laughs> I am uh, one of uh, the patrons. Did you know? No, I, I didn't. Congratulations. Attention, attention, please. Without further ado, let the symphony begin. Hit it, George. <laughs> It was working. Sort of. This is the world's quietest wind symphony. George bellowed until he could bellow no more. You're in luck, Mr. Glass. I was able to call in the 57th Street Whirlybird Squadron. Wind is on the way. arms are about to break. Oh, well. Maestros, when glass wants wind, glass gets wind! <laughs> Breakfast was George's favorite meal of the day, along with lunch and dinner. Uh, George, could you pass the pepper, please? Pepper always made George <laughs> sneeze. Uh, are you all right? <laughs> That's some mess you made. I'll go get the sponge. Ooh, except I'm late for a meeting. I have to go. Can you clean up, George? Thanks. And make sure to vacuum up all the crumbs. I saw an ant in here a few days ago. Uh, no, George, that's a bad thing. Yes. Once ants discover food in an apartment, you can never get rid of them. Never. George had another idea. Maybe he could get the ants inside the trash can by filling it with food. Mm. 
It was working. The ants crawled into the can as fast as their legs would carry them. George had to get the ants out of the apartment fast before they escape. The ants were outside. Problem solved. Except, now they had a new problem. Where would they put them? They couldn't put the ants on the sidewalk. They'd get squished. And they'd get even more squished on the street. The park. The ants would love it there. Huntley was a small dog, but he made a very big noise. What's going on there? Hey! George and Hundley set the ants free in a nice empty area of the park where no one would step on them. George said goodbye to each and every ant. This could take a while. It had been quite a morning, but the ants were gone and everything was okay. George, I can't believe this apartment. George had forgotten to clean up his mess. Good job, George. Not only did you clean the apartment, you also took out the trash. He did? Oh, oh yeah, he did. <laughs> of course, you also shoved napkins and handkerchiefs into the wall and covered it with bandages, but I'm not even gonna ask. <laughs> you just sit down and take it easy. I'll go make us some lunch. <laughs> George could finally relax. The apartment was clean, and he'd never have to worry about ants again. The men with the yellow hat love jazz. Oh, listen to that poppin' beat. George liked popping beats, too. Popcorn. Oh, good idea. Ow, 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 ow. I'm Howlin' Hal, continuing with our Bonnie Smooth Marathon. I love Bonnie Smooth. <laughs> and for all you Bonnie Smooth lovers out there, now's your chance to win two free tickets to Bonnie's concert tonight. Huh? Just be the first caller to tell me, what is Bonnie's favorite snack? Oh, you make the popcorn, I'll make the call. <laughs> There's nothing a monkey likes better than pushing buttons. You have to push the buttons in the right order, remember? <laughs> oh, push the timer. It's the button with the clock on it. <laughs> then push 200 zero zero for two minutes. Uh, uh, ah. Got it! <sighs> then push the green triangle to start. <laughs> Hello, caller. So, what's Bonnie Smooth's favorite snack? Raisins! 
Come on down and get your front row tickets. <laughs> oh, does he not realize Bonnie Smooth is calling in five minutes? Maybe George can hook up the call. He can make popcorn and program the VCR. There's a lot of steps. We could draw another picture. It, it worked last time. I think it's too much to show in a picture. I know. We'll make a model. <laughs> Done. It looks... Uh, terrible. Close enough. wasn't coming through the phone this time. What had he forgotten? Hal? Hal and Hal? <coughs> oh, I thought I'd missed you. How are you? Oh! oh. <laughs> he did it! Yes! Huh, my boss always said a monkey could do my job. Thanks for letting me come on with my new song. I wrote a special for you, you know, and it goes like this. Did I miss anything? <laughs> hey, there's a monkey in the booth. Not now. He's in the middle of an interview. George was very proud of himself. He had run an entire radio station. Maybe someday, he could even learn how to tie his shoes. Oh, dancing down the sidewalk, swinging on a breeze. City Committee pod number seven, come to order. George was honored when Steve asked him to be part of his pod. As you know, the mayor has declared today City Prettification Day. That's right, Steve. Pods will be fanning out all over the city to pick up litter and, well, make the city pretty. Right again, Steve. Later this afternoon, I will pick a winner. <laughs> pods will be judged according to the prettiness of their streets the amount of trash they collect, and their can-do spirit. Steve asked me to mention that the winning pod will get their picture on this pretty city poster. Ooh. Ah, can't you just see my face? I mean, our pod plastered all over the city? Oh, <laughs> Good luck, Pod 7. I'll see you at 3 o'clock sharp for the judging. I expect great prettification. Huh. Finding things that went together wasn't going to be easy. The pirate ship floated on water and was made of wood. <laughs> the duck floated on water, but it wasn't made of wood. Um, uh... And the heart-shaped box wouldn't float very well at all. What about a collection of round things? He had a lot of those. Ooh. But wait, that meant he'd have to throw out the ship. Ooh. <laughs> ah. Well, since the boat was made of wood, George decided to have a wood collection. <laughs> but then he'd have to give up his watch. There were blue things, and things that were half blue, half green. At last, George knew just what to do. Okay, it looks like we've weighed all the bags. Where's George? We can't win without his trash. Ah! 
<coughs> um, this bag is empty. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> um, George, is that the only thing that didn't fit into your collection? <laughs> oh, there may be more trash upstairs, but I think we have to go see. Well, this is highly unorthodox, but okay. Now, I have to warn you, the apartment may look a little messy, so... ta -da! Well, I'll be. That is beautiful, George. <laughs> beautiful? Oh, it's a work of art. A color collection. Way to go, George! <laughs> And what better way to capture the can-do spirit of Pretty City Day than to turn trash into something, well, pretty? <laughs> With your permission, I'd like to hang this in the City Art Museum. <laughs> in fact, I think that would ensure that Pod 7, led by Steve, will be on the Pretty City poster. I hereby declare that Pod 7, led by Steve, is the winner of the City Prettification Contest. Yay! Isn't it great, George? My, uh, I mean, our picture on a poster, thanks to your work of art. <laughs> Looks like a number two carbon pencil stub. Nice yellow. <laughs> this was a good beginning of a whole new collection. Italian chefs have a word for perfectly cooked spaghetti. Al dente, which means not too hard and not too soft. <laughs> Tonight, Chef Pischetti's pasta was not al dente. Huh? It was glob. Huh? Did I hear her? Did she come back? <sighs> I think something's bothering Chef Paschetti. <laughs> it's gnocchi. I cannot concentrate on my cooking because my beloved piccolo gatto has abandoned me. <laughs> Matty! The accordion! Ah, uh, here we go again. Oh, no more happy times watching her play Hat o' Pesto. Now Gnocchi only stays for breakfast. And then, poof, we don't see her till bedtime. Why, what did I do? Oh, she used to play in the alley all day. Oh, look. Here she is on an old canvas drop cloth that someone threw out. <laughs> the way she clawed at it. <laughs> I think she was afraid of it. Oh, and the old cardboard boxes. <laughs> those were always getting in her way. <laughs> oh, those old carpets. <laughs> she liked them, but they always made her fur so dirty. And there she is waiting by the old wooden door. Oh, she scratched and scratched and scratched it, wanting to go in and out, so I got her a new one. With the cat door. <laughs> she can't mess this one up. It's metal. And I cleaned the garbage out of the alley to make it neat for her. If you wanted to keep your alley cat at home, Maybe you needed places to scratch, like the ones where she roamed. But what if George found a way for Gnocchi to roam at home? In Chef Paschetti's basement, he stacked his carpet pieces like bags of rice, turned his crate into a tree, set his canvas up high. And his boxes became a menu board. <laughs> Only instead
instead of burritos, it had bolognese. Now came the hard part, waiting. You think this will keep my gnocchi at home, Giorgio? Ah. Gnocchi! I have a surprise for you! <sighs> oh, she doesn't come. It is hopeless. Meow. Uh, my gatto piccolo! She's here! She likes it. She really likes it. <laughs> Quick, Nettie, get the accordion. Now that Gnocchi was scratching at home, soon there would be pasta al dente for everyone. It's no secret that all little monkeys love to dance. When George got an invitation to Allie's dance party, he went in to dance overdrive. <laughs> he danced while he dried. <laughs> Woo! Go, George, go! Wow, that dance is really looking good. He danced while he brushed. Sometimes, he even danced while he slept. It was Bill. George wondered if he was going to Allie's party, too. No way. I'm thinking of maybe moving. Look after my stuff, will ya? Why? The dance party, that's why. What did I tell you, George? Even the Rankins are practicing. <laughs> it's called social dancing. Man, they're good. I bet Allie does that dance, too. It's right on her card. This'll probably shock you, George, seeing as how I'm an expert at bunnies and boat building and pretty much everything. But I can't dance. <laughs> Anyone want to go fishing? Oh, what's this? Uh, <laughs> our, our dance map. We're learning the box step. Oh, the box step, eh? This time, George placed the dance step so they could watch each other. Ready? Sure. <laughs> I guess. Up uh, is left, right. Oh, oh yeah, uh, you're not so that sorry. Right. You're on the left. Oh. Um. Hiya, George. Hey, Bill. Thanks for coming to my party. <laughs> Did you go to the dentist? <laughs> what are we going to do? <laughs> What's wrong? Uh, my shoe is untied. But it's Velcro. I need to tighten it. <sighs> oh, okay. How can we remember the dance without the map? And then George saw it. The box step was shaped like a box. I see. All we have to do is make a box with our feet. Uh, may I have this dance? Why, certainly. <laughs> sure. Hey, that's some fancy dance. Ew. 
Well, you dance beautifully. And George, too. I wish I knew that dance. You mean you don't know it? The only dance I know is this. Whoops. <laughs> but your dance looks fun. Oh, and I've got the perfect song. It makes me think of you, George. Aww. The George School of Dance was definitely getting off on the right foot. It was a great day to fly a kite with a friend. Kite flying friends are forever. Whoa. Even if good weather isn't. <laughs> hey, come back here! <laughs> All right! I think we need a new kite. <sighs> we don't have enough money, George. You know, you could put the kite on layaway. You give us part of the money now, and we'll save the kite for you until you have the rest. <laughs> so after we pull the weeds, we'll have exactly 20 minutes to walk the dogs, 25 minutes to mow the lawn, etc., etc., which leaves us 45 minutes to pick apples at the Rankins. <laughs> then, on Monday morning, we get our kite. <laughs> but only if we finish all our jobs. So we have to stick to this schedule. <laughs> this is a lot, George. They told us down at the store about you and Bill wanting to buy a kite by Monday morning. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying the weather got in your way? <laughs> well, that, that's why you gotta make hay while the sun shines. Huh? <laughs> that's farmer's talk. Means you can't fight the weather. When it rains, you stay inside and fix the tractor. When it's sunny, you go outside and mow the hay. George realized that he had outside jobs and inside jobs. Maybe, instead of fighting the weather, he should just come up with a new schedule. What do you suppose got into him? <laughs> An idea, most likely. Why won't this weather cooperate? <laughs> doing here? A visit isn't on the schedule. Stop! You're getting the cards out of order. <laughs> George rearranged the cards into two groups. Inside jobs they could do while the weather was bad, and outside jobs for when the sun was shining. Ooh, ooh. Uh -uh. Can stacking, basement cleaning. Okay, those are inside jobs. Apple picking and raking. Those are outside jobs. So you're saying, do the inside jobs now? Huh. That's a great idea, George. I should have thought of that. Come on. For the rest of that day, Bill and George did their inside jobs. And the next day, when the weather was good, they finished all their outside jobs. Good job, George. Good job, Bill. And on Monday morning, a very tired Bill and a very tired George bought their kite. Well, well, you have more than enough. Here's the change, George. And George even had enough money to give to some needy friends. Here you go. <laughs> so 
So once again, it was a great day for two friends to fly a kite. And to take a nap. <laughs>